ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನನ್ನ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರಗಳು ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ಸುನೀಲ್ ಆನಂದ್ ತೀರ್ಥ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಕೋವಿಂಟ್ರು ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ದೋ ಮೈ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇನ್ ಟು ಲೇಸರ್ ಶಾಕ್ ಪೇಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಸಿಡಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಅಲ್ಯೂಮಿನಿಯಂ ಲಾಯ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ಯೂವಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಮೈ ಹಾಬಿ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ರಿಯಲಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೂ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಐ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಅ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ರೈಟ್ ನನ್ನ ಮುಂಚೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಮೇಲೆ ನೋಡಿಸಿದವರು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಜಯ ರಾಘವನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆನೂರ್ ಅನಂತಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶರ್ಮ ಮತ್ತು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮತ್ತು ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ ನಾರಾಯಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ಇಂಥವರು ದಿಗ್ಗಜೋತ್ತಮರು ಮತ್ತು ಸಂಗೀತದಲ್ಲಿ ದ್ವಿಜೋತ್ತಮರು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಟೇಜನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಅಂಕರಿಸಿರ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಏನು ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂತ ನನಗೆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಬರ್ತೀನಿ ಸೊ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ Uh, it was such a wonderful experience listening to it and i could uh, relate to what was played on kamach and also on hamsadwani and also especially on madhuvanti to what i am going to be presenting especially in the psychological aspects of the paper right uh, the uh, title of the paper was uh, actually cut short uh, in the uh, pdf i guess and the actual title of the paper is as provided on the screen it's actually the mathematical and the scientific principles involved in the design manufacturing and playing of the saraswati veena and it's how it interplays with the psychology of the musician and not only the musician but also the audience right uh, it seems like a big topic and it is a big topic 20 minutes i can no longer definitely do a justice for it and uh, and i'm probably pretty sure that you will be uh, gauging um, how much Uh, information is coming out of this fellow or how much information am i able to take this i will take to keep the um, mathematical aspects and the scientific principle as simple as possible as i am proceeding further uh, but um, definitely when it comes to music i will definitely humble myself and also in terms of psychology and medicine i am supposed to humble myself with that spoken i will uh, begin my presentation narayanaya paripurna gunaranavaya ವಿಶ್ವೋದಯ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಲಯೋನ್ಯತಿ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಬುಧಾಸುರ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ದುಃಖ ಸತ್ಕಾರಣಾಯ ವಿತಥಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರಾಮೇತಿ ರಮೇ ರಾಮೇ ಮನೋರಮೇ ಸಹಸ್ರನಾಮ ತತ್ತುಲ್ಯಂ ರಾಮನಾಮ ವರಾನನೆ ಪೂಜ್ಯಾಯ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರಾಯ ಸತ್ಯಧರ್ಮರಥಾಯ ಭಜತಾಂ ಕಲ್ಪವೃಕ್ಷಾ ನಮತಾಂ ಕಾಮದೇನವೇ ದೂರ್ವಾದಿವಾಂತರವೇ ವೈಷ್ಣವೀಂದಿರ್ವರಿಂದವೇ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರ ಗುರವೇ ನಮೋ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ದಯಾಳವೇ ರೈಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೋಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ uh this is the abstract that i'm going to be uh, having well the first sentence is pretty much uh, highlighted good music has good sources and multiple sings so what do i mean by this eradu pramukhya da word words ide idralli one sources and another one is sink what do we mean by a source something which comes from that which gives is called as a source and that which takes is called as a sink alva sink mele namage tap irutte tank inda neer barutte sink olage hogutte so that which gives is the source and that which takes or receives is the sink e music ak sambandha pattidrare especially carnatic classical music or any classical music for that matter the source is always the divine the source is always the divine but the sink is multiple the sink is not only the multi- musician the sink is also the environment the sink is also the audience who listens to the music and then to go from these sources to the sinks more effectively it is essential to have a very good understanding of the underlying principles not only in terms of music but also in terms of the design aspects the manufacturing aspects of the veena itself next slide please pithe ratno paklupte ruchir ruchimani jyotish ashanni shannam brahmanam bhavanam tvan jolati nishpade vaidika he vidyaha sevante murtimatyah sucar charitam bhati gandharva geetam pratyekam deva samsat sopita bhavagan nrti dadyo vadushu so this is actually a, a shloka in voice that in praise of uh, um, uh, pranadevaru hanumanta and madhvacharyaru in the last but second in the second sentence you actually see bhati gandharva geetam while you are actually praising hanumanta or vayudevaru or madhvacharyaru you are actually saying that you can give a very good comparison in terms of when a person is so parinata and so acquainted with music which is gandharva geeta you don't necessarily have to provide any proof for him that he is also well versed in other languages so that is the uh, proof that is being given in this shloka 
And uh, I think uh, the second shloka that I'm giving over here is pretty much well known to the music fraternity, which is Veena Vadana Tatvagnaha Shruti Gnati Garsa Visharadaha Talagnas Chaprayasena Moksha Margam Subhachati is given by uh, Yagya Valka, right? And uh, literally, um, there are multiple um, ways in which you can interpret this. Uh, the most common way is Veena Vadana Dali Yaru Tatvagna Ragirtaro Shruti Jati Ali Chana Channa Ge Gnana Vanna Hurtitaro Talagnas Talada Talada Parichaya Yargirato Mathe Aprayasena Inta Hovaro Prayas, prayas, indre, um, uh, without any efforts, our moksha mark dal hurt put the renta. It is the superficial meaning, right? In Salpa Kalagil the Nodavakidra, Kalagil the Nodarin, actual meaning, but Yagi Valkar Yak Higadro, Yagi Valkar Yak Higadi the renta, Vina Nijavagalu, Vinaya on the Mahatva one yet hid the moment, Vinaya Mahatva one yet hid the road, Bari, Pancha Bautika Vinala, Bere. Actual uh, spiritual perspective in the world of Kagate, the Ishlokona, Vina Vadan Antonre, Vina Antonre, Vandian Tate Vina, right? So Vandian Tate Vina Antonre, Nama Dehave on the Vina, right? Nama Deha on the Nudso Yaru, now Nama Manas, Nama Hurdea, Nama Manas, Nama Hurdea and Nudso Yaru, Bagonta. So Ili Vina Vadan, Tatuagna Antonre, Tatu Vagna, Tatu Antonre Adu. Tatu Antonre Adu Antonagate, Avanu Antonagate, Ve Parama Parabraman Tolbodu. Vagna, Tatu Vagna Antonre, Avanu Avanu Avana Avana Baga Paricha, Gnan, the Gnana. Avana Baga Paricha, Ruvamantan Moksha Margale, easy after to put an end of Hilizare. Adundela Shruti Jati Visharata, Shruti Jati Visharata, and the Shruti Jati Antonina common words of Togobodo, Shruti Gale and the Shruti Baga Yarnana to Rubo Hogodu. You can also consider it as Shruti Antonre Vedic like Samana Burte. And on the Hutti Dawan, Shruti Ali Hutti Dawan on the Yaru, Pramatmane, Paramatha Jan Tandre, you were a Hutti, female literal tone, Shruti Jati and Tandre, Vedamate and Tatare, a Harit Ilukum, the Vishara, the Inta or Parigna Yargir, the Auru Moksha Margaret, the Bali, easy for Putter and the Hilta, and at the same time, Talak Nash Chaprayas and a chant under chant under Chamaka Prashne, the Lower Bodin, Chamaka Prashne, Rudra Prashne, the Cha, Cha and the Bertha Hurte, other than the chant under Bagantan Hesro. Cha is another meaning for God. Right? Prayasana, Moksha Margam, Eatra knowledge, Intaha, Undu, Tatha, and Yagya Valkar, Hethi, uh, Vina and Tandre, he is actually seeing it in multiple perspectives, not just the Vina that we are playing. The next slide, please. Ilinda Sulpa, uh, we, will, we will now enter into technical aspects. Um, the first, the overview is first, I'm going to be talking about the mathematical and scientific principles, followed by the design and manufacture of the Saraswati Veena. And uh, you also see the playing of the Saraswati Veena and how it interplays with the psychology of the musician and the auditions. Audience, either like interplay hega gate, no, this is a paper about. Next slide, please. See, um, it's not just a system. It's also a system. It's a system. Just like a veena or a stage, it's like a system. So there's a system. A mic is a system. Everything is a system. So you have a source and a sink. So you have a source from which something comes and the sink which something goes. So everything, even the Carnatic classical music is like this. Even the playing of the Saraswati veena is like this. So if you generalize this to the second level, so, if I expand the matter, then I am not going to be source. And then, if now, now, a very big propensity to know that, source becomes a musician, and the sync is what he is playing through the instrument. To and what comes out of the instrument is the music, and why and where does the music go? The music that he is playing, he is being uh, uh, is taken in by the musician itself and also the, by the audience. So, you see a closed loop control system. If you're actually seeing in terms of control systems engineering. So uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, I, uh, I expand this in terms of something, uh, we have a lot of interactions between each of these stages and the environments that you have around us. One is the musician basically has an interaction with his psychology and the divinity. And the divinity interaction comes at different stages. It could come initially, it could come as he progresses in terms of his musical experience or whenever, he, whenever the divine or the musician wishes. And when he starts playing the instrument, there are a couple, couple of aspects which needs to be considered. Uh, these aspects are given at the top, only the technology, uh, whether we are using pickups, whether you are using magnetic pickups, or whether you are using vibratory pickups, what kind of pickups are we using, what kind of uh, auditory systems that we have, what's the design of the auditorium, they have to consider those parameters. Next to you have the materials. You can be making, uh, you can fiber vina barate, and then uh, you can make it in terms of wood. Um, different, different materials gives you different perspective, different type of musical qualities. And each of them will have an, its own individual effects on the psychology, and also not only the musician but also on the audience. 
ಆಮೇಲೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಯಾವುದೋ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಒತ್ತು ಕೊಡ್ತೇನೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ದಿ ಆಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹಿಯರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ದ ಸೈಕಾಲಜಿ ಸೊ ವಿ ಸಬ್ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಬಿ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಅಲ್ಗೋರಿತಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಅದು ಇಟ್ 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 ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ದ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಶೇಪ್ ಸಬ್ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಈವನ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲಿಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಮಧುವಂತಿ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಈವನ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲಿಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕಮಾಚ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆನೆಸ್ಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಕೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಟ್ ನರ್ವಸ್ ರೈ ಅವರು ಕಮಾಚ್ ತಾನ ನುಡಿಸ್ಲಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ದ ಕಮಾಚ್ ತಾನ ಹೇಗೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಒಂಥರ ಶೃಂಗಾರ ರಸ ಒಂದೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಅಂದರೆ ಅದ್ರ ತುಂಬ ಎಳೆಯ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಅದು ತಾಯಿ ಮಗುವಿಗೆ ಈಗ ನಾನು ಹುಟ್ಟಿರೋ ಮಗುವಿಗೆ ತೋರಿಸುವಂಥ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಣಿಸುತ್ತೆ ತಾಯಿ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ತಂದೆ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ಆ ಥರ ಒಂದು ದೃಶ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಫಗೆಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಫಗೆಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟೆನ್ಷನಲ್ಲ ಹೊರಟು ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ರಾಗಾಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಸೈಕಾಲಜಿ so this is just the basic uh, uh, veena design and construction i don't have to spend a lot of time on this because i'm pretty sure everybody is acquainted with it so you have um, some major aspects of this which needs to be highlighted is you have two big resonators resonators are basically which amplifies and receives and amplifies the sound and you have the production of the sound in terms of the strings either it could be main strings or the uh, the, or the or the secondary strings and uh, you have some uh, auxiliary devices which actually help in improving the sound and controlling the sound next slide please so what are the things that we need to consider in the design process right so first we have the types of materials needed i already paid an emphasis on it and the basic requirement what is needed out of the instrument or do you need a uh, do, you, do, you, do you need a stringed instrument or do you need a wind instrument what kind of an instrument do we need right and the size of the instrument the size of the instrument plays a huge role in terms of the music that is actually being produced and you have the mechanical loads mechanical loads for example the strings we saw that the uh, whenever you are playing any veena or you need to adjust the strings right so whenever you are into adjusting the strings you are actually impregnating a lot of tensile forces into the material and whenever you are pulling the material the, the material that you are making the veena of should be structurally sound of withstanding so much amount of force otherwise it's going to be an utter failure so that's the thing that we need to consider and that um, reflects the physical strength that we have and also the practical availability of the material i cannot say that i am going to be making a veena out of kevlar composite structures because it's not available and it's not going to be practical <laughs> and then proceeding further you have the long term structural integrity uh, i had the uh, pleasure of um, talking to um, uh, prashant ayengar sir the other day in his home he actually showed me a veena which is uh, uh, 100 uh, more than 100 years old and uh, in terms of uh, just i was just thinking about in my back of my mind like if there is a veena which is more than 100 or 200 years old and it's still functional and it's uh, it still produces wonderful quality sound then that means that what could be the amount of planning that the manufacturer of the veena should have put into in terms of deciding the material deciding the manufacturing methods that needs to be made so that the structural integrity of the product which is in this case the veena goes on for centuries right and at the same time you have the mechanical properties and the acoustic properties of the material so i'm going to be paying more uh, emphasis in the next coming slides next one so the five the five aspects that we need to be uh, paying a lot of attention to is the design material technology physical principles and of course the mathematics you cannot you, you can't run away from mathematics because that's a fundamental thing so what are the fundamental design parameters when we need to do uh, design of a veena or especially a saraswati veena right so we have the first one is operating base frequency ranges that is the first thing that we consider in the uh, design of any instrument are we going to be operating this instrument in the hertz range or the in the or in the kilohertz range what kind of a range of music or the frequency of uh, sound that is being produced by this musical instrument is what is should be considered because if we want a um, musical instrument to produce a sound in the uh, say 2.1 kilohertz you probably need to go for flute rather than veena if we need to be fixing the bass frequency to something like 500 hertz or 400 hertz we probably need to go for a stringed instrument as we have in the case of a saraswati veena so the deciding the bass frequency is very important and the prc uh, i'll explain what is prc and src prc is just the kuda and src is a soraka that we have in the veena and um, we also have the sound board dimensions basically the sound board on the um, below the uh, right plectrum
and the presence and size of the Nagarandra on the um, PRC or the Akuda assembled or one piece Veena. What kind of Veena are we using? Everything is very important. Next slide, please. And the material concentration during manufacturing is extremely important as well. So when we actually come to the materials, you, you just look at a Veena, you can uh, bifurcate that the Veena is made of these materials. Prominently, it is full of wood, right? Uh, so when you consider wood, you will have to consider the choice of wood. Are you going to be considered a jackfruit wood or a mango tree wood or eucalyptus tree wood? Or it's up to you, but it should be proper for the choice. And then wood fiber orientation, this is extremely important because uh, the mechanical properties are the greatest along the fiber direction. You basically what you do, you might have seen in the olden days when we actually have an axe and then cut a wood, you always cut, you always send the axe parallel to the length of the wood. That's because the mechanical properties are the weakest in the transverse direction and the strongest in the longitudinal direction. You cannot cut the wood so easily by cutting transversely, but you can easily cut the wood longitudinally. So if you consider that aspect, so that is why, and that actually reflects in the way in which the sound propagates along the longitudinal and the transverse direction. So that is very important. And also in terms of the wax that we use uh, below the frets, uh, wax is just uh, bees, wax, but bees wax, but it also has certain properties to it and also has some uh, auxiliary materials in it. For example, carbon black is used and also in terms of uh, hardening agents are used and the way in which the amount of the volume fractions of individual um, reinforcements or precipitates that you're going to be adding decides the uh, damping coefficients of these particular uh, matters and you also have the string material um, which is pretty much known and the fret material you can use it in steel or brass but why do what happens if I use it in steel what happens if you use it in brass also depends also decides how co how good your vena is going to be right these are the, some of the secondary um, se secondary design factors. Once we have the primary design factors fixed on, you can now play with the secondary design factors. Um, if, as we have in the sitar, in the sitar you actually have a curvature to the fret, right? But in the veena you have a straight fret. But uh, that, that's one of the prominent differences that we have in terms of the design differences between a veena and the sitar. That actually is a, makes a huge impact, but I'm not going to be talking about how it impacts in this presentation. Uh, you also have the SRC of the secondary uh, resonator size, or the Saruka size, and the uh, material that you use, and the wood fiber orientation size and number of Radharandras. Some of the some of the olden types of veena has actually three Radharandras on the Kuda, but some of the newer ones have only one. So it depends, or some of them don't have any, right? Next slide, please. So, so I, I need to pay good emphasis on this because uh, the couple of slides from now on is going to be completely mathematically and physical modeling oriented. Uh, please don't mind if you go, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm putting a wrong statement. Uh, please uh, always uh, feel free to raise your hand and ask a question or anything if, if something goes out of the hair or something, right? So from the mathematical perspective, how do we, how do we um, define an instrument, right, from a mathematical perspective? Any vibrating body can be represented by differential equations, right? So when, when you come to mathematics, it's always about differential equations, right? Any equation will have a solution. The solution of this equation is what we hear in our ears, right? And you also have from the physics, uh, or the classical mechanics perspective, you have the vibrating body can be ideally made up of a spring mass and energy dissipator, right? So whenever, uh, you, whenever, whenever we strike a string, on the vena, right? It's always, it starts vibrating and it's just like a spring, right? A spring is a mathematical analogy of, or a physical analogy of the tensile string that we have. And the mass, and the mass is, the string has a mass, the vibrating body has mass, and the kuda has a mass. Everything that vibrates in the vena has a mass. Mass means how much it weighs. Not exactly, but understandably like that. And you also have the energy dissipator. Energy dissipator means whenever we strike a string and leave it, the vibrations will not persist for an infinite amount of time. It will die, right? After maybe 10 seconds or 15 seconds at the maximum, it, it stays there. That is because of so many damping forces because there are certain elements in the nature which takes away the energy of vibration. It, it, it reduces the vibrating energy, right? So the, the extent in which the energy is being reduced and the rate at which energy is being reduced decides the quality of sound and it also decides the quality of gamakas that we give. Either it could be kampita, guraka, kampita gamaka or spurita gamaka, whatever. This is the deciding factor. Next, next slide. 
So, um, th th this could be a, a bit intensive, uh, basically uh, the diagram that you are seeing on the uh, top left corner is basically a, uh, is a well known mathematical model for any vibrating body. Uh, we have a force being applied on a mass M, force is represented as F and you can see clearly as the arrow being acting on the mass and uh, behind the mass you have a spring and a, and a dashboard called C. Uh, called a damper, right? And you have a damper. Damper is basically an energy dissipator. Uh, it, it's a non-conservative force in your Lagrange equations. Now, the equation below that is a differential equation, which is a second order differential equation. You can solve it pretty easily and then the solution is represented as this. And F0 sin omega t, you can also give any different types of, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, but the, the crux of the argument is this. The x that you see here is basically the extent by which the string vibrates above and below, above and below. But you see that it reduces because we have a damping terminology called CC on the right hand side, which is basically the structural damping that we have. The moment we have structural damping, it reduces the X. So what happens is if we don't have the damping force, if we actually play a V string, the string keeps vibrating for infinity, right? The moment we have a damping force, what happens? The string vibrates and then it stops after some time. If the damping force is too much, the string doesn't vibrate, it immediately comes back to the rest. It's kind of like a um, damp door, right? Some of the doors which have a pushback mechanism don't work properly and then keep oscillating after and then reduce for some time. And some of them which have a very good damping actually come back to constant, right? Next slide, please. Um, basically what we are saying here is the amplitude ratio. Amplitude ratio is uh, very simple. When I, st when, I, when I pluck a string, in the first mode of vibration, what is the maximum x naught? That is being represented as x naught in the denominator and maybe in the nth, nth vibration or the second vibration or the third vibration or the fourth vibration, you have xn being defined and xn as you plot along the x-axis and the y-axis are actually fraction, a fraction of critical damping. Critical damping is just the ratio of the damping that we have to the critical damping force or the damping coefficient. So when we actually plot this, you see that there is a curve like this. That means that's actually saying that greater the damping that you have, the greater that the amplitude ratio reduces, right? Greater that the amplitude ratio reduces, the greater is the sound going to be dying out. So, we, so um, throughout the presentation, I'm going to be linking everything that I'm saying to materials and how it affects the psychology because it's a huge topic and I'm going to be uh, uh, linking things there and then, right? So how this affects the quality of sound is basically if we do not choose the right quantity of carbon that is being mixed in the wax under the fretboards, it increases or decreases the damping. Then that means that the gamakas that we are going to give, in our mind, we expect that the gamakas are going to be staying for three seconds at max or four seconds at max. It's going to die within one second and it's not going to be giving a good quality of sound, right? And that's all because we are changing the value of critical damping coefficient. The moment we change this value, the music gets affected, right? Next slide. Uh, these are in-phase and out-of-phase response component. Basically what it, this affects is this affects the way in which uh, you see some beat phenomenon sometimes. Na, 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 na. Some certain beats phenomenon appears in terms of, especially when you are tuning the stringed instruments. For example, the sarani and the mandara when we are, when we are stringing, suppose we are putting both for sa and one is slightly out of tune for certain amount of frequency, you get a beat phenomenon. So that, that's what that's, that's being represented in this, but in terms of damping coefficient also. Next slide. Uh, these are just the velocity accelerations. So the first equation you already I've showed it to you. If you differentiate, you get the velocity and accelerations. But these are extremely important in deciding in which, in the way in which you get the pitch of the sound, right? pitch, or you, you recognize the pitch and you're in the way in which you get the, um, uh, the sharpness of your gamakas or the smoothness of your gamakas will be represented through x dot and x double dot. Uh, basically, you see that when the ratio becomes equals to one on the x-axis, you have a peak rise. You have a peak rise, that's basically at the resonance that we are seeing. And that's what exactly happens in the terms of uh, resonating strings. And uh, we see that uh, Prashant Iyengar uh, uh, has actually has a veena with 24 resonating strings. This is what is actually happening. In his veena, uh, the uh, omega by omega n reaches unity many times and you have a humming sound in the back. The resonating frequency takes up to the height. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just the transmissibility in terms of how uh, the force is being transmitted to the uh, 
uh, base structure. Next slide. Next slide. Um, we could omit this as well. Next slide, please. This is a um, general multiple degree of freedom system, what uh, I have written for in terms of a Veena. Veena is a multiple degree of freedom system. We don't have just one string and one mass. We have many strings and many masses and many damping coefficients. So we need to consider a summation of all these things. Next slide. How, many, how much time? Um, so this is an idealization of the uh, Saraswati Veena in terms of if we want to mathematically model it. If you go to the next slide, um, next slide please. Yes, what I am putting here is I am basically uh, modeling all the Saraswati Veena in terms of spring masses and dampers. So this is going to be uh, giving us a complete mathematical model which can be easily analyzed in either a software or even in terms of equations. Next slide. Uh, this is some of the design. Yeah, this is an audio spectrum of Raga Maya Morla uh, You see that uh, there are certain heights and peaks and number of uh, patterns of variations in uh, uh, certain frequencies. If you actually compare it with different ragas, then that is where we actually get an emotional perspective to the raga. For example, if you are uh, listening to Shiva Pantwarali, or even if you are playing to Shiva Pantwarali, the Gandhara is different. Right? That's where you get the effect. And also the Mandara is different. So the Mandara, Daivata, and um, Pa, that's where the difference is very small in terms of Shiva Pantwarali. And the way in which you interpret or psychologically, subconsciously, is different from the way in which we interpret either Maya Molagola or even in terms of. Um, uh, Shankara Bharata. Next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, this is just to emphasize that uh, uh, we have um, the uh, fingertips have a very high density of uh, nerve endings. And uh, yeah, these nerve endings actually, whenever we are playing any types of gamakas, are always activated. Uh, so whenever we, these nerve endings are always activated, our motor neurons and then, then the brains are always be receiving and sending information like an actuator and a sensor, actuator and a sensor. So it's a closed back control system, right? So this is uh, what I want to emphasize the left uh, image here is a Venkatramana Das Pantulu who was playing the Veena in the vertical direction as he was playing belong back. Um, somewhere uh, the uh, size of the second resonator or the Soroka has reduced in the line, in the time. So you see that the size of the resonator is pretty huge in this instrument. The moment the size of the resonator is very is huge and you actually see that he is actually close, he holding it close to his head. That means to his ear. That means he's, he is able to pick up very minute vibrations and very minute changes in the gamakas through his ears. So this type of instrument is what I would recommend for a person who is going to practice Nada Yoga through uh, music. Because if you, uh, uh, practicing Nada Yoga with magnetic pickups would not be so akin to what we should be done because uh, we are not getting the natural sound of it, of it. The moment we get natural sound of it, very close to the air, undamped and unperturbed sound, that is when we are closest to the nature. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. So this is the model which I have extended, uh, Kenny's model, I, I have extended it with, with uh, divine interference, the divine and the musician and the audience, musician and instrument. And you have the Saraswati Vina at the top, which are all in coherence with each other, right? Unless and until you have the divine interference here, you don't get the good quality of sound as you expect. Next slide. Um, this is well known to you. I, I, I've been explaining it through, the, through my presentations. Next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, this is one very important thing. You, uh, is, is recently, some sort of studies have been done in terms of brain waves. You have the delta waves and the alpha waves and beta waves. And especially when we are playing something, we, all, we have a constant exchange of electric impulses through our brain and the spinal cord and also the nerves. And when these frequencies reach resonance, then we have certain frequencies called as waves being emanated, alpha waves, beta waves, and alpha waves, gamma waves. So when we are able to achieve these when we are able to achieve these states, that is what we, our Purvajaru called as Samadhi in terms of playing music, right? Next slide, uh, next slide. This is just the uh, analysis of the Raga Shubha Patavarani, very small tanam played on Veena on uh, uh, ascend and descend uh, and, and, and the decay of it, thank you. Next slide. 
Yeah, concluding remarks, um, uh, the, the design of the instrument is extremely important in terms of how you receive and how the how it affects the psychology and not only that, and the manufacturing aspects that we consider in our arena are extremely important That we, because that if I, if I consider to uh, make a wood, make a vena out of plywood, it's not going to be the same as uh, the vena made out of uh, an unseasoned wood and it's not going to be the same as the vena made out of a seasoned wood. Uh, so all these matter a lot and psychology and divine intuition is extremely important unless and until now yava bhavadali namma yatra yashti ratho ashti yatra ke namma vina nilate athwa vina yatra ke namma nilake antara sadhya illa namma yatra ke namma namma music ke namma katta kondu bandre namma yatra innu hechu agutte ashe that is how the that's that, that's the crux of what happens here and to achieve this we need the design mathematics and everything thank you uh. You can give the mic to him. You can give the mic to him. Uh, what you've actually probably shown us today is extremely interesting. And uh, there are various facets to it which can be, you know, discussed much more at length. Uh, it's actually opened up a lot of possibilities and many of us have been discussing these issues. Uh, I do think that this half an hour or 40 minutes that you've got is extremely less in terms of the fact that there are a lot of issues that we face as performing artists which can be looked at in a different light, in a more positive and scientific manner. Also given the fact that we go to different auditoriums, different people having different controls over the you know, system, so what is it that we need to do to get the right type of sound that we are used to? Somebody is used to a little bit of a bass sound, somebody is used to more of a metallic sound, and you talked about the, you know, f metaphysical part. Only when you get that right sound that you can actually perform well. Otherwise, a part of you is always uncomfortable, right? So these are some of the things that we do face as Veena artists, less pro probably for a violinist. We do face a lot of it. And so it makes a lot of sense to do delve a little deeper into this. And, you know, probably you can educate us in figuring out how each one of us should look at our instrument, the way we need to fashion our, you know, uh, systems and, you know, our, uh, you know, activities so that we get the right sound that we are comfortable with. So that's just the closing. Uh, Thank uh, you so I, very much. I just want to intervene, when, uh, just uh, to extend uh, what my, our uh, learned uh, Vidwan said. Uh, the, uh, the facts, whatever he expressed, it's right. Yes. But and, uh, we need to work on it. Yes. And uh, uh, that's the reason I spoke with Ananda Tirtha. When I spoke to him, he was in UK. And I called him and said, we have to develop this system because we have to be very scientific in our approach. The damping agent which we are speaking about, the lamp black, the, that's I want to just share a word about it. The quality of black, black that we are getting is not correct today. Because until the damping agent is correct, the output of the sound root and the sustenance of the gamaka will not happen. That's what he was sharing very much. He was very emphasizing on that factor. And the research on the aspect of the uh, damping agent and also in the olden days, they used to use a cloth inside making the instrument. I think Anandatita, you know about it. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, they used to have a rough cloth mm -hmm. inside. Okay. They used to paste it on the wood. <coughs> I have studied the instrument. So I uh, hold about uh, 200 plus instrument because I have it with me. They have, uh, when it was opened, I studied it, it is having a cloth inside, a rough cloth. Because and it, it, and it used to be wet. Yeah. Uh, th there is a good explanation for there, that. Because, yeah. because it has an effect on the sound. Yeah, basically, when we have a wet on the wood, yeah. the, the moisture impregnates into the wood and, the more, and then the wood expands. expands. So basically, we are introducing compressive residual stresses in the wood. So whenever we have compressive residual stresses, so the properties appear to, or, or I, we appear to take on an apparent mechanical properties rather than its natural mechanical properties, which are actually higher. Yes. So the higher the properties, the uh, higher is the propagation of s speed of sound in the material. Correct, correct. Can you also share the information between the comparative study of the uh, Fred, which is the convex or uh, oh. uh, concave, right? I'm, I'm uh, in case of uh, sitar, we have a yeah, convex yeah. surface. Yes. That convex surface and the flat surface, 
the expandability of the frequencies that we have, what is an advantage in Veena, what is the advantage in Sitar? Uh, when, when you can, whenever we consider a flat, okay, uh, I'll make it simple, uh, I'll make it very simple. Uh, let's say that uh, flat fret is completely flat on the stage, right? And there is a huge string like this wire starting from here, ending from there. And I come from, uh, down on the stage and I pull it like that and then I leave it, right? So when I am pulling it and then leaving it like that, so what is actually happening is there is just an in-plane extension of the length of the wire. That means that the wire, I'm not taking it up, I'm not pulling it down, I'm just pulling it in the, in the plane of the stretch. When I am doing that, there is no Y component or Z component, there is only X component. Right? There's only X component. That is what is actually happening yes. in Saraswati Veena. Yes. So, so somehow it has turned out that this sort of technique or this sort of method is actually more apt for Saraswati Veena because that is what we expect out of Carnatic classical music. Uh, when you go to sitar, sitar is different. The mathematics is slightly more complicated when it, when it comes to uh, sitar analysis but uh, compared to Saraswati Veena because it's not flat, it's curved and it's not even uh, semicircular or something, it actually has a particular uh, equation for it which is not the equation of a circle. So when we are actually having like this, imagine that uh, I make a, a non-linear ramp on the, uh, on, on the stage which actually slopes down like this and then uh, I come back and do the same experiment and I start pulling the string. So now what happens to the string? The string is not being pulled in the same plane because as I pull it, the string on this side starts rising on the ramp, right? Starts to rise on the ramp. That means that along with the X component, there is now a Y component. So if you take Pythagoras theorem, the change in the length of the string is actually delta X squared plus delta Y squared under root. So this is not the same as delta X that we get in yes. Saraswati Vina. That's what. So that changes and moreover this is quadratic because now once we have quadratic, the differentials become linear, the, uh, the rates become linear. The moment you have rates becoming linear, all your, the way in which pitch changes, the way in which you put the gamaka, instead of na, you will get na <laughs> in a sita, which is different. So that, 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 that is why, the mathematically speaking, the gamaka is also different by the same pull and the same speed of pull that you give in the sitar or even in Navina, they are completely different. No, they are different in another sense because we have, in case of Veena, the sustenance is more compared to the uh, sitar yes. for the sim simple reason that when it is pulled in x-axis completely in the x-direction, the frequency will not get cut. Yes. Rather, in sitar, it has to travel through a surface yes. through a convex length. Yes. So when it is pulled to a convex length to the other end, so when he has to come back to its original yes. position, yes. 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 to yes. the rest yes. position, exactly. so the frequency is cut. Frequency because is it has to travel and, through and, and a Y an, component. And, and a Y component also, and there is an added uh, complication for this because the sitar operated at a slightly higher frequency yeah. rather than compared to Veena Sarani. And whenever you have a higher frequency, that means that the uh, from the equation that I showed, the X is going to be smaller. When the X is smaller, velocity of vibration and, uh, is, and acceleration is going to start going higher and higher, though the range starts reducing. Though the range starts reducing means what happens is uh, it doesn't have so much energy to keep vibrating. The structural damping that you have in the Veena takes away all the yes. other energy. One final question about what our uh, yes. learned friend said. Uh, the, uh, we have uh, different atmospheres and we have uh, different audience together. And we have to tune our Veena and we have a tune of the Veena. Every mind is set to a particular rough, particular sound pattern. Because if Jai, Raj, uh, Jai Shri Jai Raj want to play Veena, they want more bass. They were expecting more bass yesterday. <laughs> if you want other artists, they have went, some artists wanted a mixture of treble and bass. Some people only want to treble. So this is, what is an ideal factor for a Veena? If a player has to, uh, no, no, it is our different sound of practice also in the house, how we tune our uh, mind. But uh, as a scientific approach, what would be the best thing, either to have a mixture of treble or uh, uh, bass, or it is only treble or only bass? What are the three options that uh, it is suitable? Uh, keeping apart the bass treble, if you just look at the fundamental vibrations frequency, right? If you consider the sarani string, assume that it vibrates at 780 hertz or something. So assume that it vibrates at 800 hertz. Uh, if it is vibrating at 800 hertz, uh, now you need to, there is a, there is a separate branch of uh, study in mechanical engineering, especially in terms of automotive and aerospace called as ergonomics. And in that there is a sub-branch called as human vibrations. When it comes to human vibrations, 
we, uh, you consider the natural frequency of vibration of your spinal cord, of your hands, of the brain. Yes. Right? And, and, and if, you, uh, if you have the right conditions, the heart chamber, the blood in your chambers of the heart can start resonating. Right? So that is also, it could be good, it could be bad, I don't know. But these are things that happen. So it is, there's no one clear answer for it. It depends on what works for that musician. Yes, that's what I was uh, finally coming to the conclusion. Every body frequency yes. is different. Yes. That is the sum of the total frequency that emits out from the body. Mm. That we have uh, a different subject which we are going to discuss in the afternoon about the frequency and the related things and how we swing are related to that. But the frequency of the body emitted and the frequency that gets input from the vena, if it matches, then only we get that uh, yes. complete reflection yes, of yes, the... Yes. Manodharma. That, that's that where we can actually produce. start connecting with the nada. Otherwise, uh, it is like I'm talking French and you are listening, you are expecting for Sanskrit. It's not work. It doesn't work. Both should be in Sanskrit or both should be in French. Both should be in Canada. Then the Veena speaks in French and I listen in Sanskrit. It doesn't work. So we, the best is both should, switch, uh, one should speak yes. Sanskrit and I should listen to Sanskrit. Thank you so much, Sana Sunil Anand Tita. You have been wonderful. Give him a big round of applause. And we, we, we are going to continue our research with him. That's what we have, I have told him. So he is going to help us out from our school, that we are Veena Ganalia. We have told him that we are going to work together in the field of Veena because have, we have created one Mela system, which, is, which you can fit to any Veena and alter it yourself. And we are working on the ergonomics of it, how it has to be done and what are the things, how whether it works on the body frequency or not. That's the reason we are not releasing it outside yet. So we are working with it. So I thank him. I request uh, Vidwan Balakrishna sir to come and honor him for his wonderful lecture that he gave uh, today. Thank you so much. Anand. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. In fact, uh, I, I, I still feel I am extremely humbled by this opportunity to come and speak on the stage itself. And at the same time, I feel like uh, there is a very famous Shubhashita in Sanskrit called as Kaka Krishna, Kaka, Kaka Krishna, Pika Krishna, Ko Bedo, Pika Kaka Yoho, Vasanta Kale Samprapte. Kaka, 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 kaka. No, no, that is, that is different. <laughs> that is different. So I really don't know whether I'm a kaka or a pika, so it's not up no, to... No, no, you are, you are neither of that. You are, a, you are born for something in this world. And you're doing a wonderful job. I've been uh, behind you for long, so, uh, so many years without knowing. But I know what is uh, this one. But uh, by God's grace, I w wanted you to be here. He has made you come here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone. Thank you. Now I request Purti to come and introduce the artist on the stage, please.